wonderful day to you out there, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to another edition of Standpoint. I am Dakmo Arua Joye. So will the planned National Convention of the People's Democratic Party hold in Port Harcourt State, a river state? That was the question on the lips of millions of Nigerians on Wednesday, as the leadership drama in the party continued with yet two opposing court judgments that further turned the PDP apart. Eventually, the much-awaited convention was postponed, while the tenure of Mark Harfi was extended as a caretaker chairman for another 12 months. Uh, what is the way, what is going on in the PDP? To know how divided uh, the party is, we will take a listen to uh, the party chairman, I mean, the party stalwart in the Southwest, Ola Bode George, while he was reacting to the Botch Convention that was meant to hold in Port Harcourt, but never did. This is one of the issues we're looking at today. Uh, I told you my name is Dakbo Aruajre. After the break, I will introduce my first guest. Stay tuned. <music> Deceit, something that is absolutely inept, unacceptable, unreasonable, that he was sitting quietly in his house. So he was dead down. right. No, he's a saint. Compare with these two guys. Because they now went back again. Ayo was telling us at the meeting, we said, oh, I got my fingers burnt once. I won't try it again. What did he get burnt now? His whole body. What kind of a charade is this? What an insult. Now, you, you now walk outside our box. Wiki is now to tell the Yoruba people who should be their own representative. Did we come to Rivers to tell the South South people who they should send? It is unacceptable, absolutely sacrilegious. The Yoruba people, we will not accept that. This party, we will remain in the party. We will correct the madness. We will correct the ills of the party. And we are going to reposition this party. This party, we will not accept any more convention in Rivers. Never. Because we've done it twice and it is, it is it's an insult on everybody. So why would he go there? Why should we go there? Why can't we trust him again? No matter where, even if it's one, one couple, people will sacrifice and we will hold the convention at the neutral place in Abuja. There must, be sense, there must be senses brought in, there must be commitment, there must be dedication, there must be loyalty brought into the party. Absolutely, he should just go and sit down and man his rivers. Because if he does it again, he will be, we will be singing the non dimities on the PDP. Because the, the way they did it was as if it's his personal part, property. I am shocked at this guy. We had had governors there. Dr. Dilly, civilized gentleman, very proper, very straightforward, very honest, very committed and dedicated to the, to the party. I know the role he played. But now to think you can hoodwink us, co control the party, tell us who to stand up, tell us who to sit down. At my age, there are elders in this party. And there is no community anywhere in the world. At what point in time were you giving voice to the likes of Ayo Parashe? Because a lot of people feel that this... What he did, he owes it to come and explain himself to the Yoruba people. We met. If he doesn't want to support me, he'll find out that day. That's not a problem. But you don't pay good with evil. I know what God used me for in, in making him governor. From the very first time. If he wants to, to repay by evil, no problem. The Almighty is watching. I pray for all of them. But remember, whatever you sow, you will reap. As you lay your bed, so you will lie on it. This last scene that I saw is this week. I had never in my life seen such treachery, such despondency, such lies, such deceit, and thinking they can get away. We've had governors in the past, and we will have governors in the future. This is not the way you leave a positive legacy. Never. Finally, the, uh, the party is still factionalized. 
what is the way forward? What should be done to Mohamed Sharif? You know, he he's a saint now. I call him a saint because what he was telling us about warning us about these two characters has come to, to the fold. What he said about them has come out to be, to, to be true. You know, I kept telling them, I had been in the party long enough. I had gone around settling quarrels. In fact, my specialization in party management is conflict resolution. I had looked at it. There is absolutely nothing that is structurally defective about the party. What we have are inter a, a, a personal greed, personal ambition, unnecessary deceit, lies, and, and you can see them quite in the open. Because he who comes to equity must come with clean hands. I can't see anything structurally defective. We will resolve this crisis. You know, we had this convention just a few months ago, ended up in a fiasco. We went again. This one was divine intervention. Has nothing to do with APC, this APC, that. What has he got to do? That's what I'm saying. What has he got to do with the price of milk? I was listening to Jimmy Agbaje talking rubbish that uh, it was the opposition they don't like. What has he got to do with the, with the price of milk? They created the mess. Somehow, God intervened. It was God's intervention. He was rushing to be, to be chairman. It is not getting that position that day that matters. How on earth would he have been able to manage this party? What is his track record? How would he manage it to come to the elders and sit there? Do they know who he is? Who brought him? He will be answering his godfathers, his pay pack, pack, uh, his pay, pay, pay the leaders who put him there and told him, sit down, go stand up. That's the kind of party they want. If we had run the party the way they are planning, there would be no PDP today. We lost an election. Naturally, we'll go into a state of flux. It is that state of flux that we are trying to re to reestablish to stabilize the platform because you know a three-legged body is a stable platform. And what is the three-legged body? The founding fathers got these three foundational principles: justice, fairness, and equity, as the tripod that gave us that platform PDP. PDP is a national party. It is not a tribal party. It is not a religious party. But the way these two are trying to recreate it is to make it look like as if it's a river state party. No, sir. No, sir. Nobody has ever insulted the Yoruba people. And nobody, we will never accept anybody to insult us. The same with the Northerners. They were, they were insulted. Because I knew when they went to them, uh, Alaji Mantu, Senator Mantu, was livid that we all accepted. In the open, there will be no imposition. Every zone, go and do your work. You come in there. The competition, which is intra, is to be minimized so that we will just go there and make it a carnival. When we, it comes now to APC versus PDP, then we are ready as for, for to prove to Nigerians that we, we, we are better managers than the other party. So all these crises we have, they are not structural defects. Those are the, the, the kind of defects that we find very difficult to manage and, and, and fix. These ones are just personal, ego, ambition. Very easily we can massage the ego, cut down your ambition, because only God gives possibility. That was all about the Georgia stalwart of the PDP here in Lagos, and uh, it's, going, it's vying for the chairmanship position also. And uh, in the studio, have uh, Mr. De Tokumbo Pierce, is the publicity secretary, right, of the PDP here in Lagos. Uh, which faction is that, if I may ask? Well, <clears throat> You know, this keeps coming up, and uh, I can only say that 
I am the publicity secretary of the the PDP under the leadership of Prince Kola Balugun and the chairmanship of Otumba Shegwandiwale. Okay. The party that received a formal letter of authentication from the National Working Committee of the party as the authentic PDP structure in Lagos State. Mm -hmm. The other group that you call a faction, I don't think they even qualify to be called a faction because they have no authorization whatsoever from anybody whether McAfee or, or, or Sheriff, nobody from the national ever recognized them as having had an election out of which they evolved. So, so you are saying you are the authentic Well, party. I'm telling you the reason why. If I say mm -hmm. it and I don't have reason, then I'm just talking. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you that we, my group, has an official letter authenticating us as the official group of PDP in Lagos State because it was our Congress that was recognized as the full Congress of the PDP in Lagos State. Bode George, uh, Salvador, and the group that Bode George has hand-selected does not have any locus whatsoever to call itself the structure of PDP in Lagos State. That's part of the impunity that is creating this problem. Chief Bode George talks about Things coming to haunt people. But, but uh, the, and, the description, and, this description yes. is given is like a house divided against itself. Sure. Like, like uh, the PDP, it's its own enemy. The way he's saying it. Well, let me tell you this. He is saying that um, as you lay your bed, you lie on it. You, so you can mm -hmm. lie on it. And he, that speaks to him more than anybody else. What As he mean? lies, lay his bed, is lying on it now. He is the one that brought Agbaje in as the monster in Lagos State. Agbaje was not even a member of the PDP until four or five months before election of 2015. Hmm. He brought in Agbaje, supported him, and worked his way through a faulty primary to get Agbaje denomination. Agbaje, we told him at the time that as you lay your bed, you have to lie on it you are responsible for an infraction, an impunity, and it will never go away. That's what we're getting now. Agbaje has become a monster. So he has to deal with it. <laughs> what do That's you mean? his problem. What do you mean, Agbaje has well, become Agbaje a monster? has become more powerful than him. Why do you, if you... they had that election, what he's complaining about is that the election was rigged for Agbaje already. So the, he walked away. The chairmanship. The national chairmanship at the convention last Wednesday. So, Agbaje would have defeated him hands down. Because if you had a choice between Bode George and Agbaje, we would even go for Agbaje rather than Bode George. Not minding, not minding anything that's happening. Okay? Look, look, you see, Chief Bode George gives the impression that this convention was about him. He had nothing to do with it. He created a problem. If he says Wike is a problem for PDP, yes. Fayoshi is a problem for PDP, yes but he should add himself to the number. He is number one problem for the PDP and has always been. I'll tell you why. Why? In the first place, how did this chairmanship get zoned to the South? Listen now, this is where it all began. Mm. The party said, let us leave the chairmanship with the Northeast to which regional uh, to which geopolitical zone it had been zoned originally mm -hmm. after Moazu, let mo, let modu sheriff complete the term of Moazu. there was a special election convention in 2014 where Moazu was elected as the national chairman. chairman now this was to carry on the zoning of the northeast when Moazu left in 2015 we organized another election so that a, not, a person from Northeast can come in and complete his term. That's how Ali Modu Sherif became national chairman. Mm -hmm. Once he got in there now, because he had some problem with some governors, and one of the people who gave Modu Sherif the greatest problem is this same chief body judge. Arguing that we cannot zone the national, uh, the presidency to the north and also keep the national chairman in the north. In the, no in the north. We now explain to him that, look, the reason we're having this thing in the north for a while, temporarily have the chairman with northeast as had been zoned, is because as we stand now, 
the northern part of our party, our northern brothers and sisters are feeling disenfranchised. We want to use this transition period to give them a sense of belonging and bring them in. Because out of the 12 governors we have, mm. and they are the most powerful in the party, 10 of them are from the south. Mm -hmm. Only two from the north. They don't have a say. Of the topmost positions in the party, the most influential positions in the party, out of the four, all four of them are from the south. Ikure Madu, Akwabio, Ogo, and Governor Mimiko as chairman of the Governance Forum. Mm. For which reason we said, let's keep this in the north temporarily. Oh, but the judge was the most, he was the loudest of them and said, look, it's got to come to the south. Must come to the south. The ham twisted the party, the zone to the south. Now listen to where the problem begins. Okay. In my opinion, I always tell my students, if history is confusing to you, it's because somebody is lying. If you tell the truth, it becomes clear. There's always a reason for things to happen. Mm -hmm. When it was finally zoned to the south, you remember the conditions I said it was zoned to the south? Yes. I'm twisting. It was now zoned to the south. Okay, okay, yes. you give the impression now that we are prejudiced in favor of the north. So, okay, let's stop that. We zone it to the south. Chairmanship is zoned to the south. The next thing you know, this same body judge and others started arm twisting the party again that it should be sub-zoned to the southwest. It was zoned to the south. That's why Dr. Persis stayed in the game. Mm -hmm. But it was zoned. Now they have to stay the party, now zoned to the southwest. This same body judge, body judge should not even be talking at all. This same body judge went to the southwest and arm to stay the governors to now subzone it to Lagos State so that he can get it. Unfortunately for him, and, Agbaje now and, em emerged. And you have uh, Agbaje also. Agbaje now came up. But when he was doing all of this, this is why he was shocked when Agbaje came up. And Agbaje now came up. I don't know who sponsored Agbaje now. And Agbaje now becomes the, 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 uh, the, 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 the target. He becomes the, 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 the leader but, but in the is polls. It, is it, is it, where, That's let me, let where me. the problem is. So now, but the judge has no reason to complain. It's talking as if this is a Southwest problem. Don't talk about Yoruba people. The chairmanship of the PDP is not a Yoruba event. It's not a Hausa event. It is something that should be national. Okay, let this me let me come in. Let me come in now. What about the convention? There yes. was there was something happened in Port Harcourt, sure. and uh, Mark Afi's uh, tenure was extended for twelve months. For for students out there, for for the lame people, who is the leader of PDP today? Is it Mark Afi? Because he's got an extension for twelve years. Or 12 months. 12 months, I mean, yeah. But he's still the leader, or, or Sharif is the leader? Who's the leader? Again, I think people have to decide for themselves based on the kinds of things that I will explain. You can call Mudu Sharif an embattled chairman. Embattled. You can call him a problematic chairman. You can call him a challenge chairman, but he's still the chairman of the party. Because McAfee is simply a chairman of a caretaker, given 90 days, you remember, to conduct elections where elections are not taking place, congresses where congresses are not taking place, so that the states can have a viable, legitimate uh, 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 executive committees. And to conduct a national convention. That's all his mandate was. So there is no room for a structured committee to conduct the affairs of the party. That's why we have not had the party speaking out. You've not had a, a national publicity secretary. You don't have a chairman. A you don't have anybody th th was speaking for the party. A convention held of recent, or there was a gathering of recent, and uh, people will say that's Which a one? PDP. May uh, 21st? Yes, uh, no, the, yeah, the one that happened some, a few days ago. Uh, well, look at what happened. Look, you see, if you want to know the, 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 to understand the problem, you must go to the roots and understand the foundation of the problem. The problem is that, in the first place, how did McAfee emerge? There was supposed to be a convention, mm -hmm. May 21st, 2016. When they got to the convention site, the chairman of the party, who by law, by a constitution, must declare the convention open, 
did not, that was Modu Sheriff. You know, up to that time, there was no dispute about his leadership. Yes. When he got to the convention, he was supposed to declare the convention open. And he said he would not do that. He said because he had court cases that had instructed him that he should not hold the convention. Because he did not hold the convention, the, some people, the governors, came together, including body judge, and compelled an election. At which time, they now had the deputy chairman, Chief Secundus, hmm. to declare the convention open. open. Now, that was illegal. That's the impunity that is at the foundation of the problem. When, you, when the chairman is around, the chairman said there should be no convention. You now think you are so powerful that you can override the chairman. And then you went and brought his deputy to come and declare the convention open. open. So they had an illegal convention. A legal at, convention. Oh, definitely. At which time, McAfee was, elect, was made the chairman of a caretaker committee. When the national chairman, who legally should declare the convention open, did not declare the convention open, you challenge him on that. You resolve that issue, not to take over his position and declare a convention open and do whatever you want at the convention. That's what happened. So the August That's 17th convention, the, 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 recent, this, the recent convention, was it the legal convention, a legal convention? No. August 17th. Now, no. I just told you the first one. Yes. The second one, 90 days. McAfee is now in a hurry to complete the 90 days. Monday, it was 90 days. Wednesday, they had the election. Where they had the convention. Mm. When they got to the convention, again, there was a court ruling that said, you cannot have this convention. So the site was sealed off. Yes. So there was no convention. There was no convention. Oh, well, look. look. Can I quickly take uh, sure. uh, Mohammed from Gombe? Uh, good afternoon, Mohammed. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah. My name is Abengida Mohammed. I'm calling from Gombe. Thank you for joining us. Your, con uh, your contribution, please. Yeah, thank you. Please. I want to know that is it this uh, McCarthy, between McCarthy and Sharif, who is the great party chairman? Who is the party chairman? Yeah. From, uh, <laughs> if you ask Mr. Adeku Tokubo I well, think he has his answer. I have just told you <laughs> the reason why I believe that it can only be one chairman, and since Mudu Sharif is still there, and has not been officially and legally expunged, defeated at an election, therefore he is still the chairman. Okay. McAfee is the chairman of a temporary structure that was put in place, given 90 days. And his tenure has elapsed, is that what you saying? Definitely. But what about the extended tenure? The extended tenure is also a fraudulent activity. So in when the it, first place, listen, listen. No, no, no. When will, be, when, will the leg, when will the legal convention? When will it be held? Look, look. If you are going to extend the term of a temporary committee chairman, you're going to inform INEC 14 days. You're going to inform the party. Okay. They did not do either of that. They just got because they got to the convention, and that was not the plan. That wasn't the plan. Of course not. The plan was well, what do you do in a convention? You elect officers of the party whose terms have elapsed. Okay. They but were there to, to do election for the national chairman, the national secretary, and the national auditor. Okay. That was what they were there for. Can I take uh, another caller from Lagos? Good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon, Najiboye. Yeah, good afternoon. I'm calling from Ketu. Okay, your contribution, yeah. please. please. My contribution is please, let us move this party forward. All this country that is going on, and I am not in support of it. I am not in support of it. I am in the court. You hear that he was already been sacked as a national chairman. But this, uh, this my gentleman is saying that I am not in support of the chairman of the party. So which, which, where, where are we going? Where are we going? So let us put this party in a, in a straight forward. So PDP cannot spoil it. Don't let right. us spoil this PDP. It is okay. one party of the, of the party. Th Thank you so much. Uh, where, where are we going? That's a How big question. How do we move the party uh, and forward? It, uh, let, let's talk about something first. Let, because we're talking about the cost of all this. Yes. Uh, the, the argument, like what uh, Jimmy Agbaje said, was APC was a major cost of, of all this. And uh, apparently, uh, we heard uh, Olabo the judge saying 
No, the problem is within. And where those, what do you think? Is APC the cause of all this? Because they will say Ali Modi Sharif is an agent of the APC. <laughs> some other faction will say Mark Afi is an agent of the APC. And some no, are no, saying... that has not been an issue. I haven't heard anybody say Mark Afi is an agent of APC. It is, Mo, it is Modu Sharif they've seen is an agent of APC. And I'll tell you why they're making that claim. Mm. Because he's an in-law of Muhammad Buhari. Totally irrelevant. I'll tell you why. Mm. When, when uh, Bamanga Tuko was national chairman of the party, the person who opposed him the most was his in-law, Nyaku, Governor Nyaku of Adama State. Hmm. So that's in politics that, that, that is that not is, that's, that, Okay, yeah. where does so where we does Wiki because Wiki and Fauci were in support of uh, Sheriff then to emerge as the chairman. So where are they now? Because well, Olabo the totally, judge is not even totally they're not with him now. They are not. <laughs> they're not with him. They're the ones that created the first problem in the May twenty first convention. Okay. They're as, the ones that organized the the, the, the emergence of, of, of McAfee. Okay, as we round up this session, because I have another guest. Where are we waiting. going? Yeah, the solution now. Now, Obasanjo has said it. Jonathan has said the same. Negotiate with McAfee. What are McAfee's terms? If these terms are unreasonable, I would like the audience, the viewers, to decide. One, and by the judge by by default now is agreeing with McAfee, whom he opposed and nearly destroyed, mm. that this convention should not be held in Port Harcourt under the jurisdiction of any governor. Okay. So that they cannot manipulate it. Let it be held in Abuja. Abuja, Abuja is neutral. We are not in government. PDP is not in government. So therefore, PDP does not control Abuja. Abuja is now neutral. One. Two is no governor should be the convention chairman. Because they manipulate it. Is that the time themselves. of sheriff? Yes. Third, the convention committee should be made up of equal number of his people and equal number of McAfee's people. Okay. Is that not fair enough? Fair, fair enough. Yeah. And fourthly, since technically is the chairman, before all these problems started, he is ready to convene the convention. But it must be him who convinced the convention. Nobody <laughs> else can do it. <laughs> Nobody and, else can do it. And all these conditions, you think the McAfee group will This is will why abide. we are where we are now. They have not accepted any of them. Okay, so after, after the acceptance of all these uh, conditions, there will Muhammadu, be peace. Uh, uh, Modu Sharif has said clearly that, look, we, uh, uh, after these conditions, he's even ready to leave. Okay. As Dr. chairman. Dr. Adeko Vubapes, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks uh, for having the me. The Publicity Secretary at uh, PDP here in Lagos. Right. Don't go anywhere. Okay, welcome back. I'm moving on. The Green Chamber, as the Nigerian Lower House of Legislature is symbolically called, has in the past uh, weeks uh, treated Nigerians to an audience drama that can only feature in the make-believe industry. Uh, the can of worms uh, being opened at the lower house is directly connected to what m some Nigerians refer to as budget party. Others are quite blunt by calling it outright stealing. Uh, since this drama began, it has been a no holds barred uh, for Honorable Jibrin, who is uh, busy in audating the general public evidences against the cutlet of Dogara and his co-travelers. Uh, to the amazement of the entire world in order to prove that the speaker and the house leaders are culpable in the budget padding saga. Uh, this drama is no longer funny, you, you must uh, admit, as it has caused outrage amongst Nigerians and has raised a critical question of the continuous desirability of the concept called constituency project. Is the constituency project for real? I'll be asking a member of the House of Representatives, Honorable Wale uh, Raji, is representing Ekpe Federal Constituency. Thank you very much for joining us. Honorable. Thank you very much. All right, before we ask the, con uh, the, the question, is constituency project real? Let us get your own, uh, own uh, heartbeat about this padding issue. To Dogara, is no big deal. Uh, the, uh, the, the executive cannot uh, pass uh, the budget. When it comes to the House of Representatives, they can tinker uh, with uh, uh, the, 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 the bill, and this is what has happened. To some people, they said, no, this is outright uh, stealing. What do you think? What is padding to you? Well, 
Thank you very much. Um, uh, I didn't expect that uh, we will still be discussing this issue of pardon or no pardon uh, by this time. Um, since the issue started, uh, a lot have been said. And um, um, as far as uh, the issue of uh, pardon or no pardon uh, is concerned, those who allege, you know, I think uh, at the appropriate time when the House uh, uh, resumes, you know, next month, uh, we will look at all the sides to the issue and the appropriate action will be taken, you know. Now, but the responsibility of the National Assembly is clearly stated mm -hmm. with respect to uh, uh, the passing of the budget, budget you know. So um, the House has that constitutional assigned responsibility of working on the budget, you know, and then, I mean, treating it just like any other bill, mm -hmm. you know, and pass the, uh, the, the law, okay. you know. So um, as far as that is concerned, I would want to say that uh, a lot have been said. Jubil, Jubril has leveled allegations against uh, uh, some principal officers, and uh, some of them have responded, some of them appeared on your on your, on, your station. on your station here, you know, to defend themselves. But what I want to uh, appeal to Nigerians is that uh, when the House resumes on the 13th, we will look at all the sides, you know, uh, uh, of the coin, and then appropriate action will be taken. Uh, because but Jibrin has been sanctioned already, right? Well, that was as the chairman, with respect to his activities, as the chairman of the appropriation committee. It was after that that all these allegations of padding or no padding, you know, uh, uh, was leveled, uh, leveled against the, uh, some leader, leaders of the part of the, I mean, of the, uh, of the oh. House of Reps. So the House of Reps, and the National Assembly is a self-regulating uh, uh, institution, mm -hmm. and it has its rules and code of conduct for members. You know, so um, the the house is already divided to those pro and those anti Jubril, uh, uh, those Dugara. in favor of Dugara mm -hmm. and all what have you. The house, when we when we resume. We shall look at the issue dispassionately, and I want to assure Nigerians that uh, appropriate uh, decisions and actions will be taken. Even, will, though, even though the house is on recess yes, already, yes. Uh, we still find someone like uh, Bajabi Amila uh, yes. visiting the police station yes. saying, "Okay, uh, you, uh, I'm, I'm rendering myself open. You can yes. probe me if you want." Yes, yes, that is personal reaction to some of the, I mean, the, to the development. But as an as an institution, the House of Reps will take appropriate action when all the all the parties, you know, uh, to the controversy, you know, will be expected to make their representation okay, you know, but, to but, the House. Boss, but what okay. I want to what okay. I want to say what I want to say is that uh, rather than continue dissipating energy on the issue of uh, pardon or no pardon, the Appropriation Act has already been passed. And it's being implemented, you know, mm -hmm. by the executive. For instance, I listened to the Minister of uh, uh, Finance that already 400 billion, billion naira has been released for capital projects. And they are about to release another 60 billion naira. Nigeria should be more concerned about on what projects are these, I mean, is this money being spent? And what are the benefits? Because I expect that um, we should be more concerned about lessons learned from the whole controversy. Mm. Now, definitely what it has revealed is that uh, uh, we still have issues with the budgeting process in the country. Yes. I expect that ideally we should have 
a Nigerian budget by Nigerians and for Nigerians. It should be transparent. The process should be transparent. It, will, it should be participatory and it should be inclusive. And when you, you talk know, about participatory, because yes. Serap uh, is saying that um, uh, the, what, what uh, talking about a constituency project, yes, and talking about because that was why we had a pardon issue. Yes, because uh, Jibrin is saying that uh, Dogara and his boys, yes, Dogara and Co. Yes, uh, have uh, a marked four billion. Okay, Dogara alone has a marked four billion That's era, right. to himself out of 40 billion yes. thus giving 36 billion era right. to be shared amongst 359 That's right. That's senators right. i mean right. house of representatives yes the allegation the allegation was made after we uh, we, we commenced our recess now we will have time when we resume to look at the veracity of these allegations. And I mean, we have time. Just, I mean, uh, 13th of uh, September is just around the around corner. corner. So I would advise that uh, we, should we, should, we should wait, I mean, for the House to reconvene. OK, but talking then, about, talk, sorry about that, yeah. talking about transparency and accountability. That's right. Serap is saying what is happening undermines uh, the 1999 constitution as amended. OK. Because uh, there should be a room for check and balances. Yes. Rule of law. Yes. Separation of power. Yes. If the executive sends the bill That's right. to the legislative That's arm right. of the government, That's right. and the legislative arm of the government does whatever it likes yeah. with the bill yeah. by adding or subtracting, That's right. is that good for that our is, democracy? You see, that, that calls for a review of the whole process. But it's not good. No, no, no. no, no. Okay. I, I, won't, I won't say whether it is good, I mean, good, uh, or not. good or not, but let me explain what I mean by being transparent, and also participatory. Now, all projects, by my own definition, you know, are constituency projects, because they are cited in one constituency or the other, or whatever project, mm -hmm. you know, and they are meant for the benefit of Nigerians. Now, and one other thing is that the 360 of us and the 109 senators we represent various constituencies in Nigeria. You know, during the, during the campaign, you know, for instance, the president came to Lagos, campaigned at the, I mean, stopped at uh, Surulere or Ikeja mm -hmm. and went back. The governor campaign, the governors, when they're going around, will probably stop at the, uh, the local government headquarters. But the representatives, they go to the nooks and crannies of, the, of their constituency. They okay. carry the message, the message to the people. Promising and to pro help. Promising. You know, carrying the party uh, message, you know, to, the, to, the, I mean, to, the, uh, to their constituents. Mm -hmm. And they are the people that they see on a regular basis. They are nearer they to the are, people. They are nearer to the people. Mm. They are aware. They know. They are in better position to know what these people, I mean, what the, their constituents, what they need. So what's the role so of the executive what, no, 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 excuse me, excuse okay. me. You see, there is need for collaboration. Okay. There will always be, there will be need for collaboration. One will have, one will expect a situation that prior to the, the, the prior to the preparation of the budget, probably should, there should be a sort of consultation through town hall meeting okay. to get the input of the people which will be collated, you know, and presented, you know, to the summary. And also, there's what we call uh, uh, infrastructure motions in the House, you know, uh, through which individual member, you know, is, uh, uh, is given the opportunity to present, you know, in form of motion, you know, if infrastructure challenges, you in know, within his constituency. Mm. For instance, the first motion that I moved, you know, when I got to the house last year, was on the power situation in Nepal, and I drew the attention of the executive to the uh, to the Omotosho IPP power project, which has been abandoned. You know, it was supposed the power line was supposed uh, ev evacuating uh, uh, power generated from the IPP project in Omotosho to Aja through Epe, and it was 
supposed to be a permanent solution to the problem of uh, electricity supply in Nepal. In my constituency, for instance, in the last 10 years, we have never enjoyed regular power supply. There was even a period for about four years unbroken that we did not have electricity supply. We moved that motion, you know, and it was passed. And various other, 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 other members uh, proposed, moved motions, you know, relating to the, uh, the, uh, the infrastructure situation in their various constituencies. Mm. One would expect that at the beginning of the budget process, such motions representing Should be moved. The, 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 the situation, the, 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 the actual situation in the various constituencies are taken into consideration. But that's not, that's not the case that's, now. It's not, in most cases, it's not done. But this so, idea, this idea sounds like a laudable yes, one. Yes. Have, you, have so, you brought it no, forth? No, they, I mean, that is, now, that is the lesson learned, part mm. of the lessons learned. And I am always, I'm always very positive. When it, I mean, whatever the situation, you know, you always look at, at the positive side of it. And our focus is how do we move forward from this point, yes. you know. And that is why I'm now saying that uh, the whole process, you know, budgeting process should be reviewed such that it will reflect the needs of, of the, the people. people. Can and, I quickly take knee yeah. uh, from Sue Larry? Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, Nii. Hello, good afternoon. Nee, good afternoon. Uh, I'm uh, glad to connect with you guys. And uh, what I want to say is that to tell the uh, House of Representative people and the House of Senate that Nigerians are not happy with them. The way they are handling Nigerian issues is very, very, is very, very poor. They are not adding value to Nigerian development. Since they have resumed since 2015, there's nothing, they can, there's no bill that is beneficial or uh, beneficial or add value to Nigerians. They are, they are spending Nigerian, Nigerians' money there, and they, they are, they are, they are, the money they are spending is more than uh, budget of uh, about three states. And what are they doing? The, 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 the corruption bills are sent to them by, by the President Babuari. They have not done anything about it. What are they doing? They should just leave that place and go to their houses. They are disturbing Nigerians. People are suffering, and they are living in the, in the life of affluence. What, what, what are they doing? They should, they should let know, they should know that people are not happy with them. Okay, because yeah. we, we start throwing them on the street. Okay. Very, very soon. Thank, Thank you so much, Nii. Mm -hmm. Before it gets to that, I want yeah. to honor you here too, because they're saying you, you are not doing anything, no, but no, you've, no. Made, you've made us realize that at least you've made a mission about oh, a pie. Yes. Can, have you done more than that? Or? Oh, definitely. I mean, for instance, um, <coughs> we also moved a motion on the, uh, the headsmen, the incessant uh, clashes between the headsmen and the farmers. Towards the resolution in fact, Excuse mm. me. In actual fact, I was the first person that moved a motion on that in the Eighth Assembly. And it was shortly after uh, the kidnap of uh, uh, Chief Olufalai, okay. you know. And what did I propose? What did I propose then? And which was overwhelmingly adopted was that uh, we should create, establish uh, cattle breeding centers, you know, all over the country, you know, based on the needs of uh, the various uh, states, and it should be state financed. You know, we are rather than the we are moving the cattle here and there in search of uh, green pasture. You know, they should be. I mean, they should be confined in within the uh, the uh, cattle breeding uh, settlements. You know, that will be provided with uh, health. I mean, uh, healthcare facilities mm -hmm. for both human and the, animal. the animals, you know, and also provide schools for them. But it should be sponsored, I mean, it should be uh, uh, funded by the states, you know. So which, which, whichever of the states that is interested, if legal state is interested, let them have their own settlement. If an umbrella state is interested, let them have their settlement. So, and that will put paid to the, this incessant uh, uh, okay. something. Okay. We, there was also a motion that I moved on uh, the aviation situation, I mean, aviation safety in the country to commemorate the fifth, I mean, the 10th anniversary oh, of good. the death of uh, the, uh, of the Sosoloso, Sosoloso. Uh, Sosoloso crash. plane crash in which uh, about 60 students of the village Jesuit were involved 10th of uh, October every year, I mean, 10th of December every year 
we recommended that it should be declared as Salvation Safety Day to a day that will be set aside to assess, to appraise the uh, air safety situation in, in Nigeria. Nigeria, to look at the gaps and then address such. I know there are many more there, but yeah. let's talk about this constituency project. Yes. Are they real? They are, to the best of my knowledge. To the best of my knowledge. And it was, from what we are told, it was uh, invented during the period of uh, Obasanjo, you know, to enable, you know, uh, members, you know, bring in projects, you know, for, based on the needs of their uh, constituents, you know. So, and uh, it's usually allocated, you know, not cash, not cash, not cash, it's in projects allocated, you know, state by state. Not cash. Not cash. So what, what, where does so the money come from? What, it, it, no, it's part, it's built into the budget. Okay. And it's executed by the agency, MDA, in which it is domiciled. Okay. You know, for instance, for us... Can, it, I, can I interrupt you, please? Yes. I need to take a call from Abuja. Uh, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Okay. So, okay, okay, for instance, continue. based on our own experience, I mean, in Lagos State, those of us, the 17 APC members in Lagos State, you know, we decided that, okay, most times the constituency projects, they come in form of a water projects, uh, electricity mm. projects, and no water view. That, look, the state government is also involved in providing this infrastructure. And with the good work that uh, our governor is doing in Lagos State, I said, we said that, okay, we do not want to duplicate efforts. Let us all collapse the, the 17 of us, uh, the average of about 40, 41 million naira that is allocated, you know, as mm -hmm. for projects in our various constituencies, that the state government should nominate a project that will be funded with the 750 million naira for all of us. So it will be executed by the, by the MDA, that is the agency of government, federal agency of government that will ex execute the, the So, the so as to allow transparency. To, a, to allow transparency. We, we are not involved in the selection of the contractor. We are not involved in the, in the, in the execution of the project. All that we are interested in is the execution of the nominated project. And when you have this collaboration, since yes. you've had the collaboration, yes. 17 of you, yes. what is it that you can uh, mention now that uh, you no, have done or you're about to do? No, the project is, uh, the project is uh, uh, still part of the, of the okay, 2016 the budget. budget. So that is yet to be executed. But definitely, when the project is eventually executed and is to be commissioned, we will all be there and you don't be too much in a hurry about that. <laughs> but that is to tell you how transparent the whole thing is. And I want also to say that no, no member takes a cover. Direct, no money is allocated directly to any member, at least based on my experience in the National Assembly, in the Eighth Assembly. You see, and what people should also appreciate is the fact that... But uh, you monitor. You monitor what oh, the money Oh, of course. You nominate. You nominate your project, and then you monitor the execution. It is executed by the executive arm of government, not the legislator. So if... Like, like if anything is going to be ha happening in Ekwe now, yes. who's going to monitor... I mean, the, 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 the executive, executive... The federal executive. The federal executive. Okay. If, for instance, if I have a project that will be executed by... Department of Water Resources, Ministry of Water Resources at the federal. All I'll do is, is the project is nominated and domiciled in that uh, agency. But it's now for me to monitor that the, the job is delivered, mm. and the project is delivered mm. for the benefit of my people. Mm. You know, that's all. I'm not, I'm not expected to be involved, and I'm not, I will not be involved in the selection of the contractor the award of the contract, that is exclusively executive responsibility. It is not legislative res responsibility. At all. So if those who are, you see, look, what I expect Nigerians, rather than all these wild allegations, you know, 
is, look, concrete evidence of diversion of funds, you know. So concrete evidence. Concrete evidence. People call, should come up that okay, for social social project that was provided in social social year, it was not executed. The money was diverted into social 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 account. And the appropriate agency of government, you know, I mean, security agency will take care of the situation. Will okay. take care of that. Okay. So rather than we continue to level allegations, calling people names. I think there are some of us, and there are many of us in the house there, that have our integrity. We have antecedents, you know, I mean, uh, to, and our integrity to protect. You know, mm. So there should not be generalization. Let us be specific, specific. You know, it's not just enough, for instance, to say, oh, All of journalists, are, journalists yes. are corrupt, mm. and everybody is corrupt. I know you, I interact with many of you, you know, and I know that you are men, men there are men and women of integrity in the journal, in the uh, in the journalism uh, uh, profession. Okay. The same thing, judges and all what have you. So also we have people uh, of integrity within the National Assembly. Okay. Uh, as we round up, uh, yeah. what's happening in Well, on the twenty fifth of this month. Okay, you have a Which project. Is, on, I okay. have a project, uh, Waliraji Youth Empowerment Scheme. You know, uh, it's, uh, uh, we are executing it in collaboration with Lagos State uh, Technical and Vocational Education Board. It's to address the problem of youth unemployment. That's you part know, of your contribution, part of your contribution. Right? You know, so under this, we identified about 135 young men and women in my constituency, you know, for training in various vocations of their choice. And we entered into partnership with LASVEB to train them. And they were trained. And LASVEB is the Lagos State? Lagos State Board for Technical and Vocational okay. Education. Okay. Okay. And they were trained for three months from February to April at Technical College at mm. And out of the 135 that started, 129 of them were found suitable for certification. Yeah. So the, the graduation, graduation ceremony comes up on Thursday 25th, and they will also, will also give them uh, startup equipment, you know, uh, to, 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 take them to, to take them off. There is also, there is we, also, we need to go now, sir. yes, there is okay. also the PASS, Waliraji Poverty Alleviation Scheme. You know, those that are already skilled, but they do not have uh, the, re the appropriate uh, equipment to work with will be assisting them. It's, it's very painful that yeah. we don't have much time to discuss yeah. this. Uh, thank you very much, uh, you very Honorable Wale Raji. I'm more part your elbow. Yeah. Also, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank and that's much. all on, the, on our program today. Uh, thank you for being part of the show today. We really appreciate you all. And for those that called in and those that were unable to get through, we appreciate you all. Let's do it again next week. I am Dakbo Arua Jay. Until then, God bless Nigeria.